Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and today I want to show you how to do a swish pan without buying the expensive Sapphire plugins, but simply using real-time effects built into Media Composer. What is a swish pan? When we're done, we should have something that looks like this. See, that was the swish pan. It's actually a push effect combined with a blur. The, the idea for this episode came, uh, unbeknownst to him, by the way, from John Moore of the Avid L2 mailing list, which is a great mailing list. And if you want to know more about it, which I recommend you do, <laughs> then uh, check out this link at avidscreencast.com slash avid-l2, which will bring you straight to the list's homepage where you can subscribe and, you know, learn a lot of stuff. That's just a great list. Trust me. All right. So let's get started. I'll just open another sequence that is actually the same as the final sequence, just without the effects, right? Because that's the stuff that we want to do now. So first we need to apply a push wipe effect by going to tools, effect palette, push. We'll use the right to left push and just drag and drop it onto the edit where we want to have the transition. Now, by default, this is... Uh, creates a transition that is one second long which is way 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 too much for us so we'll go into effect mode and just change the effect duration to six frames so now we have a simple push transition looks like this okay so now we have to create the blur we'll create that blur on uh, the video layer above. And I actually found that creating a blur that is a bit longer than the actual transition itself looks better, but you can experiment uh, with the settings yourself and see what fits your needs best or what you like best visually. So let's go five frames from the, for, from the actual edit to the left and add an edit. Go 10 frames to the right, add another edit. So we have 10 frames, two frames more on each side than the actual transition, than the push transition. Go back to the effects palette, go to the blend category, use the omnipotent 3D warp effect and drag it onto that segment that we just created by uh, adding the two edits. Go back into the effect editor and now we need to add some keyframes because we want to increase the amount of blur just to the middle of the transition and then decrease it back down uh, till it's till it's done so let's get right to the middle should be frame 5 field 1 add a keyframe go to defocus Use the foreground only because uh, the other one doesn't blur as much. And use the horizontal blur and you really blur it a lot. <laughs> so let's say something like this, 250. Okay. If you watch the transition now here in the effect editor, you'll notice that it will gradually increase then right here at our keyframe, there's a huge increase in blur. Then there's a huge decrease in blur and now it gradually fades back. That is because a huge amount of blurring uh, occurs between uh, like uh, 200 and 250. So we have to adjust for that. So add another keyframe at maybe, you know, frame 1.2, something like that. Increase the blur to say 218 or something like this. Do the same thing at the end of your effect. You add a keyframe, increase the blur to 218. Now you have a more gradual amount of blurring that occurs throughout the effect. That's basically it. We're done here. Yeah, that's here is the Lambert. See? That's the swish pan. 
For more effect, you can add uh, a sound effect. I use that swish one wave file here and just edit that into the timeline. It's subtle, but I think it actually adds a lot to the effect. Now, if you don't always want to recreate those effects uh, by hand, you can, of course, um, just save them to a bin by going to effect mode. Now we're here for the push effect and just dragging the effect icon to your bin. Doing the same thing for the 3D warp. So all the eff effects uh, properties are saved in the bin and you can just apply them to a uh, different edit or different uh, sequence or wherever you like. Once again, that was pretty simple. It was not hard to do, but it's cool if you know how to do it. Thank you for watching this episode of the Yavit Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on the webpage avidscreencast.com or just on the iTunes store by searching for the Avid Screencast or just hitting those little iTunes buttons here. If you have any comments or suggestions like future show topics or anything, drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. Any comment or any critique or whatever you have is greatly appreciated. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash avidscreencast and also check out my Facebook page and become a fan, please, at avidscreencast.com slash Facebook. And if you'd like to do what kinds of things I do professionally, check out my personal or, you know, professional website, whatever way you want to call it, at editguy.de and check out the videos. Um, once again, thanks a lot for watching and have a nice day. See you next time. Goodbye.